Well, we're really uh, delighted to have worked with CIPD on this uh, report, the data from FTSE 100 CEO pay packages from 2016. It's a really important time to look at the figures and what decisions are being taken on remuneration committees and with shareholders. What we've seen this year, of course, is a modest, relative exercise of restraint uh, coming down from a big high in 2015. It doesn't mean that the problem's been solved on excessive pay at the top. It does mean that pressure works. It shows that uh, political pressure and public debate have got through to uh, shareholders and remuneration committees in FTSE 100 companies. We looked at the annual reports from the financial year end 2016 to inform our research. The companies that we looked at were the FTSE 100 companies as at the 22nd of March this year and we used the same methodology as used previously by the High Pay Centre. We discovered that average pay for a FTSE 100 CEO dropped to 4.5 million in 2016, a decrease from 5.4 million in 2015, but still higher than the 4.1 million in 2010. Around £3 in every £10 received on a FTSE 100 CEO's pay package is fixed, Almost half of their pay relates to long-term incentives and another quarter to short-term incentives such as bonuses. In 2016, the average pay ratio of the FTSE 100 CEOs to the pay package of their employees was 129 to 1. This is slightly lower than the 2015 figure of 148 to 1. If we were to compare the CEO single figure to the wages of the employees in their company, um, this ratio is 138 to 1, which is down from the ratio of 156 to 1 in 2015. If we look at the median figure rather than the average, then FTSE 100 CEO pay in 2016 was around 3.5 million, a drop from recent years. We also compared the median pay of a FTSE 100 CEO to that of a UK full-time worker, which is around 28,000 and the pay ratio of that figure stands at 122 to 1 and it rises to 149 to 1 when comparing to the median UK pay of both full-time and part-time workers. When comparing the mean pay of a FTSE 100 CEO to that of a full-time worker across the whole economy, the pay ratio is 132 to 1 or 160 to 1 when comparing to all UK employees. When we compared the total CEO pay to the average pay package of their employees, the range of ratios was very large. In some cases, the CEO earned 1,200 times the average pay package, and in other cases, the ratio was just 15 to 1. When we compared the CEO single figure to the average pay package of their employees, we incorporated staff wages, pension and share-based pay and excluded the CEO total pay from this figure. We then divided this by the 12-month average headcount figure to find an average pay package per employee. We are aware that some companies have a number of part-time staff working for them, which is not reflected in the headcount figures. And we're also aware that in some cases the CEO is based in a different country to many of their employees but we were not able to adjust for these differences with the data that we had available to us in the annual reports. We also compared the CEO single figure to the UK employee average figure. We sourced this information from the ONS's research on annual survey of hours and earnings, and we were able to use both the mean and median figure to compare to the similar figure for FTSE 100 CEOs. Some of these pay packages are still far too high, and the gap between the pay at the top and the rest of the organisation is far too wide. And it's one of the reasons why the High Pay Centre has started working with CIPD on this matter, because we think we should take a look at pay and reward throughout the whole organisation. That's what the pay ratio can do for you. It helps you track uh, the gap, and that's why we've been pushing for that. And we're delighted to have support from the government on this report. The government minister has given us a, a statement in, in support of it too. So it is uh, some modest progress this year compared with the recent past. There's a lot more to do uh, and together with CIPD the High Pay Centre is going to continue to, to push hard for more reform and uh, restraint on the, at the top uh, of FTSE 100 companies on pay.